Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. My name is Ryan Mayfield. I'm the founder of Mayfield Renewables. And this is a video series where we go through different code sections. And today we're going to be talking about the 2020 National Electrical Code and specifically 690.8A2 and talking about the allowances for conductor sizing. So let's first look at the, the language in 690.8A2. This was new in 2020. And it's a pretty big deal. It's a it's a an allowance that people that are utilizing probably on larger scale systems really more than anything. And this isn't going to have a big impact on residential type applications, but larger PV systems, especially ones where you're using combiner boxes, maybe having you know larger inverters with single inputs. This is something that's going to could come into play and help save some wire sizing uh, for your systems. And so. What the code language says is where a circuit is protected with an overcurrent device not exceeding the conductor ampacity, the maximum current shall be permitted to be the rated input of the current of the electronic power converter to which it's connected. So what we're talking about here, what the code is talking about here is that we have we have the ability and in a lot of cases in our PV systems, we are doing larger DC input to compare to the AC output of the inverter. So very common uh, thing to do anymore is to do you know, a DC to AC ratio. So the power input to the versus the power in relation to the power output of the inverter, you know, 1.5 or more. Sometimes we're even seeing upwards of two, you know, two times the DC kilowatts as to what the inverter can handle. And Prior to this code section, we would have to size our conductors from the DC, from the PV array into the inverter based on what the potential current was from that array. What this is telling us is that we can size those conductors coming into the inverter based on what the inverter maximum allowable current value is. So it's really matching letting us match our conductor size to what the inverter input is. So I'll show a picture here to help maybe uh, illustrate this a little bit. And one of the key things in that code language talks about where that circuit is per, uh, protected by an overcurrent device. So you can see here, we have some PV strings. We have an arrays coming into a PV combiner. We are providing overcurrent protection on that output circuit. So we're combining, we have a bunch of input circuits, we're combining them and we're gonna protect that output circuit before it goes over to the inverter. Now, the purpose or what this code is allowing us is again, we are sizing that conductor between the combiner and the inverter to what the inverter's maximum current input is. So quick example, just using some nice easy math, if we were to say each one of those strings, each one of those modules and the string because of the series connections is rated at 10 amps short circuit current, we have eight strings. So we would have eight times 10, which would be 80 amps short circuit current. That value, that would be our starting value if we were not utilizing this new code requirement. If the inverter by chance is, you know, let's say the inverter has a 60 amp maximum input current, that's it's only gonna allow 60 amps to be flowing through those conductors because of the, the power rating on that inverter. Well, we can use the 60 amps as our starting value to size that conductor. So you can see right off the bat, even before we do any additional uh, calculations for higher radiance conditions or continuous duty, things like that, by limiting the conductor size based on what the con inverter's input is, we're going to have the ability to size those conductors smaller. So again, the key here being that we have a overcurrent protection uh, and that we're looking at what that maximum inverter input current is. So when you put all that together, this will be helpful for, again, these larger type installations, and you don't have to size your conductors by this theoretical maximum short circuit value that the, the rate could potentially be putting into the inverter because the inverter is controlling that amount of current that's running through that circuit. So all in all, it's a good 
code reference, it's a good thing to, you know, be looking at. We're utilizing these in our designs as much as we can. And it's something that you should be aware of and be trying to apply in your own systems. So that covers 690.8A2 for this code corner. We talk about this and other NEC topics in great detail in the workshops we provide both in person and online. And our team also offers system design and engineering services, as well as consulting for EPCs and manufacturers in the PV and energy storage industries. If you'd like to learn more about us, feel free to give us a call or visit our website at mayfield.energy. Thank you.